Hi, it's Pam again. So I wanted to follow up on the other two videos that I did um, with the introduction to meditation. And something that um, a lot of people, you know, think or get confused about is, is like, well, what is meditation going to do for me? And how much is it going to transform my life? And one of my favorite authors, a guy, Dan Harris, um, wrote a book called 10% Happier. And the whole premise of that is like, if you meditate, you'll get like 10% happier. And that's like pretty good because 10% happier is, is great. Um, and, and I think that's kind of spot on because meditation isn't a magic pill. It's not going to solve all your problems. Um, I know plenty of people who meditate that their lives are still um, kind of rough and they're not kind of at this kind of A game of happiness and peace. Meditation just doesn't just kind of instantly give you peace and happiness. So I guess the question is what um, does give you peace and happiness if meditation is only one piece of the puzzle? And that's where I love to use my infamous um, tin jar analogy. And it's kind of infamous because usually when I explain it, people are like, I don't know what you're talking about, Pam. But, haha, I have a tin jar to show you what I'm talking about. So this is silly putty. Um, or... I don't know, thinking putty actually. But I don't know if you can see this kind of jar. Like, I'm sure we've all tried to open this kind of jar before. And the thing about this kind of jar is you can't like just open it from one side. Like if you just try to open the jar from one side, it won't open. You have to like open it on one side then kind of spin, open a little more. And it usually takes a bunch of times like going around, turning it, going around before you finally get it open, right? There's an eye in there. So um, I love this analogy because this is a lot like um, the way that I've experienced my kind of personal growth and transformation to the level of peace and happiness that I am so grateful to now have. Um, and speaking of grateful, uh, that's kind of the first piece of the puzzle. So the way that I explain this analogy is like there's lots of different parts of the jar that you have to kind of keep working around. And the first part of the jar is gratitude. Um, because without gratitude, if you like work on all these other areas of your life and you're not cultivating gratitude, you're never really going to crack the code. You're never really going to get the jar open. You're never going to really kind of reach the pinnacle of happiness and peace. And being grateful is one of those practices that the more you kind of get that rote, so it's automatic, you automatically go to gratitude, automatically go to gratitude, you'll be happier and happier. The next part of the jar, or as I call it, kind of the second pillar, is courage. Um, because without courage, without being brave, you're not going to, again, crack the code of getting the jar open. Without courage, you're not going to be able to kind of lean into your discomfort. And as we all know, all the magic happens out of our comfort zone. So we need to be brave in order to kind of make the magic happen in our life. Just one example of how um, vital courage is to transforming our life. But courage alone, again, won't kind of crack the code. It won't get the jar open. Um, the next one is compassion. I know I talk an awful lot about compassion um, because basically I think that's the secret sauce of life, like that kind of is the life force. Um, so as we work on cultivating compassion in our life, that's the next kind of part of the jar. And we keep working around. So we work on gratitude, we work on courage, we work on compassion. The next part of the jar is um, surrender. And surrender is kind of, you know, I think it, it is the hardest one for me and it's kind of the the last one that I've, I think I've really kind of gotten really good at, because um, it is really hard to surrender in life, right? Like, and surrender is one of those tricky words that surrender used to have like a horrible connotation for me. I used to play blackjack. I mean, I still, if I ever go to Vegas, I'll play blackjack. And I don't know if you've ever played blackjack, but in blackjack, surrender is when, you know, the dealer has an ace showing and they're like, all right, you want to surrender? And then you like get even money. You don't like worry about losing your money. And that's like, you know, betting on the dealer. It's like, no, I'm never going to surrender. And it's also too, like if you're trying to reach your goals, you don't want to surrender. That means you're not going to reach your goals. So the way that I kind of was raised and, and my kind of competitive attitude was like surrender was not a positive thing. Why would you want to surrender? Um, and it took a lot of um, maturing, I'd say, for me to realize that surrender um, isn't giving up. Surrender is kind of stopping kind of the attachment and the resistance to the flow of life. So it's kind of like saying, all right, you know what? This stuff is out of my hands and I have faith that this flow of life is gonna kind of take me where I need to go. So surrender is like super, super important to work on. That's the fourth part of getting the jar open. And then the fifth part of getting the jar open 
is openness, no pun intended, but openness and curiosity. So staying open-minded, staying open-hearted, um, realizing that you can never know everything about a situation. Your brain may tell you, oh, I know enough. I know enough to judge. Zip it. Your brain is not right. Like You never really know enough to judge. Um, judges have to judge because that's their job and society has to run that way. But trust me when I say that judging either someone else or judging a situation, it's either good or bad, right or wrong, thinking that you know enough to make a call, stay open-minded, like stay curious, stay like, what about this can I not know? What is there more to this situation that I don't know about? And just stay open about like, oh man, this is really hard, hard for me. Sometimes your brain will be like, oh, I can't do this. Dude, you can do it, just don't give up. It may take you, you know, five years, um, but just staying open and staying curious is absolutely vital to eventually getting the jar open and kind of reaching you know, the level of peace and happiness that I, I hope we all aspire to have. And so where does meditation fit into this? Um, the analogy that I use, like meditation kind of helps you get a grip. It helps you kind of practice gratitude. It helps you practice surrender. It helps, helps you practice courage. It helps you practice um, open-mindedness. And it certainly hopes, helps you um, practice compassion. So that's my infamous tinjar uh, analogy for peace and happiness. So thanks. See you soon.